Dear friends, dear campaigners, dear activists, dear government members, dear out of parliament opposition, dear friends on the Euromaidan, and dear Europeans, it's a great joy and honor for me to launch the European campaign together with you. And it's a great honor to address you today as one of your two leading candidates for the European election. A tough but very exciting challenge lies ahead of us. We're used to fighting climate change when it's about global warming. Climate change is causing major catastrophes as flooded Great Britain and French Brittany can bitterly testify, overwhelmed by the waves and storms. But our political climate in Europe is also changing and not for the better. The feeling towards the European project is cooling down as criticisms of the European Union are rising. Some of it very justified, some of it plain populism. These storms are fueled with anger and resentment. They come from the European countries that are badly hit by the crisis and that experience devastating social and economic damage. They come as well from the other side where the sense of solidarity that founded our European community is now in danger. We know it. The forthcoming elections will be fought on more than just achievements and policies. It will be a battle of conflicting ideas of how we want to live together in Europe, a battle to reignite the European spirit, a battle on solidarity and on European togetherness. And who better than us? Who better than the Greens can claim to be fit for that fight? Because we care for Europe, because we believe in the idea of Europe, because we think Europe can learn from its failures. And that's why, dear Green friends, we want to change Europe for the better. Let's turn the storms into a wind of green change. And some say, some say Europe is nothing more than a bureaucracy these days. Some say, sure, there was a peace process after the Second World War, and yes, for tearing down the Iron Curtain, the EU was good. But what does this mean nowadays? What does it mean when the main concern of the European Commission seems to be to regulate olive oil jugs and vacuum cleaners? What does it mean when European democracy is about fewer and fewer people going to vote every five years? What does it mean when basic rights of Europeans to travel and to work are being questioned? I tell you, it still means a lot to people. It means a lot for people who have experienced war and division. It means a lot to me personally, because I grew up at the German-Polish border and I saw how Europe overcomes borders. And that is still relevant. And this fight for freedom and for peace has to continue. For the people in Ukraine, Europe stands for freedom, justice, and the rule of law. It stands for democracy, it stands for fairness, for making your voice heard, and for being listened to. It stands for a better future. And I don't need to remind you, people are dying for the dream of Europe today. They're risking their lives, they're facing snipers because they believe in freedom, in human rights, in democracy. Let us not forget Democracy, freedom, human rights are vital for human life. They are vital for a society. They are key parts of justice and peace and not just accessories. Let us keep this in mind when we do politics, when we go out campaigning. These values are green values and we have to tell the people that we are their partners for implementing those green values. Let us Keep this in mind when we change Europe to become a hope again, not just for the people outside, but also for the people inside. Let us make sure that Europe is not just the idea of freedom and democracy, but that it is reality. Let us change Europe to be an idea worth fighting for. And indeed, we have a lot of things to do. 
a lot of things need changing. Let's look at Europe today. 26 million people are unemployed. 26 million. That's more or less as many people as living in Belgium, the Czech Republic and Finland combined. Youth unemployment is up to 60% in Spain and Greece. Two out of three young job seekers can't find work. Imagine what that means for a society, for a generation. Imagine what that also means for labor rights when all of your peers are unemployed. We have to wake up, dear friends. We want our future back. And then look at the European Commission. Instead of doing their job and pressuring member states to finally implement the youth guarantee, the Commission goes around saying that the young people should try harder, learn more, get their act together. That is just shameless. Cameron told young people to go to school, get an apprenticeship and get a job. What world does he live in? Where are the apprenticeships that he says people should take? Where are the jobs that he claims young people are not interested in? Where are they? What is going to create them? More austerity? More cuts? More of the Troika? Certainly not! Unemployment... <laughs> Unemployment is not just a problem for individuals. It's a problem for the whole of society. It's a collective challenge. And I tell you, it's a problem for the whole of the European Union, a problem that we need to fight together. We need to create the jobs of the future, the jobs that will still be around in 20 years, decent jobs of good quality, not exploitation. Dear friends, we Greens want jobs that are sustainable for the people and for the planet. And where do we get those jobs from? Not from trading away our environmental standards and shady trade deals. Not from being led like lemmings by growth figures. We get them from investment in the green economy, into the things that we really need in society. Renewables, energy efficiency, education, healthcare. That's where the jobs of the future are hidden. That's where we create real value for society. That's where we need to go, to an economy that puts people first, not private profit. And we have the proposals for that, with our concepts on energy transition and on sustainable farming. Millions of jobs, of local and sustainable jobs, are at hand. And on the emission trading system, we also witnessed how wannabe business parties like Conservative and Liberal MEPs voted against innovative businesses and incentives to fight climate change, regardless of thousands of jobs that were at stake. Is that their business model for Europe? They should go back to school and finally learn how the economy works. <laughs> these same parties, these same parties yield to council and commission and voted for a shocking reduction of the European Union budget. They say member states reduce investment and so must the EU. What a self-defeating approach. And here, I have a special message for my opponents, Martin Schulz and Gurifa Hofstadt. Remember when you were boasting about the Parliament's resistance to the budget deal? We knew, of course, that the EPP would eventually cave in. They always do. But we almost believed you when you said the proposal was unacceptable. Your endorsement of this retrograde and reduced budget shows that you came more, care more about your personal ambitions than you care about Europe. But we don't need your ambition, we need more social justice. We Greens cannot and we shall not accept that people are thrown out of their houses in Spain, that people are deprived of medical care in Greece, that EU citizens live in tents in winter like some have to do in Sweden. Look at Greece, 26% of its people are out of work. 3.4 million are below the poverty line and we witnessed the tragic consequences of austerity policies on public health, housing and education every day. Behind those abstract figures lie the sick who are no longer cared for, the ever-increasing number of homeless people, teachers who are no longer paid, families in poverty, retired people in distress. This is a nightmare. It is time for the EU to wake up, to realize the European dream 
For that, we need to get real about social rights. Solidarity and social justice are the future. Solidarity and social justice is what we fight for. And you know, for me, those words are part of the key green message. Because I cannot think of social justice without thinking of climate justice, of how poor people pay the biggest part of the subsidies that go to fossil fuels, about how good nature is part of good life. I cannot think of solidarity without thinking of solidarity with the people in the global south and future generations. There is no planet B. We need to take care of the planet that we have. We have to stop the destruction of nature and the collapse of the climate. And then some people say, well, let's leave the climate behind for now. Now we focus on the economy. But those people, they don't understand a thing. The economy cannot go against climate and environment. We are the ones who know that nature and economy must go hand in hand to be sustainable in order to work for people. That's where the jobs come from, dear friends. And what issues are more European than the protection of the environment and climate? Because clearly, no nation can do it alone. So where is the EU? Where is this commission when it comes to climate? When it comes to protecting rivers, ecosystems, biodiversity? The commission is nowhere to be seen. The climate targets are only targets to allow member states and companies to pollute as much as they want. Seriously, Mr. Barroso, your climate targets are nothing but a license to pollute. The next elections will be a vote on whether we allow this destruction of all of our future to go ahead. It's a vote on whether we want to be climate cowards or climate heroes. A vote for the Greens is a vote for climate justice, for a sound environment, for green jobs and for fair energy. But this election, it's also about whether there will be a fortress Europe or an open Europe. Thousands of people are dying every year wanting to reach European shores. Almost 400 died in October at Lampedusa. 20 died in Ceuta last week. And those dead bodies on the bottom of the Mediterranean, those are the people that are fleeing from oppression, from war, from persecution. Won't we give them the protection they need? They are fleeing because the global north has been destroying the climate. Because EU trade policies undermines people's right to develop. Because the EU fisheries policy takes away their very means of subsistence. And if people manage to get here, it's sheer luck whether they can stay. If you are a Syrian refugee, you obviously have very good reasons to flee. And as a Syrian refugee in Sweden, you will therefore get a residence permit. And in Germany, by far most Syrians get recognized as refugee. But most refugees don't exactly fly in business class to Frankfurt or Stockholm, but have to take a difficult and dangerous route over land and waters. If they end up in Greece, the same refugees from the same war-torn Syria will have no chance whatsoever for getting asylum. And if they end up in Italy, they will have to sleep on the streets. This is not a common European asylum system. The only thing that is common here is the lack of solidarity between the member states and with refugees. It is time that we stop spending hundreds of millions of euros in heartbeat detectors and drones and satellites to stop migrants. It's time that we get rid of the prisons for asylum seekers. It's time to end the death toll in the Mediterranean. It's high time to change Europe. It's time to tear down the walls. And look at the Commission. Are they on the side of the refugees? Are they fighting for our rights? Are they fighting for the climate? Are they really pursuing the European general interest as written in the treaty? Clearly, they are not. Instead, they are trading away the rights of citizens and consumers in shady trade agreements. They are trading away our right to decide what we eat, our right to decide our own laws. 
They will even allow companies to sue the EU and member states over fracking our cigarette packaging. But, dear friends, we won't let that go unnoticed. We will fight for our rights. We will fight, and we're fighting together with the citizens of Europe, with civil society, for our rights and for our future. We are the ones to put people before banks and social justice before private profit. <laughs> 22nd to 25th of May. Those will be the days to decide which way the European Union will go. And it makes a huge difference which parties will gain. The EPP doesn't have an interest in a social Europe. They are praying to the gods of growth, sacrificing European values to earn their mercy. But should the environment, our social standards, entire countries from Ireland to Portugal, the European youth and the European spirit all be sacrificed to growth statistics and private profit? Clearly, the EPP is the parliamentary arm of the industry lobby, and I think we already have enough of those. The Social Democrats are the party of the missed opportunity. <laughs> How often did they agree with us at the beginning of a legislative process just to change their minds at the slightest pressure from their governments? Never forget how they were allies in cutting the budget and cutting green investments. And with Schulz, they have a candidate who doesn't even know how to separate his party political campaign and personal interest from his job as a president of the parliament. How is he going to manage conflicts of interest as Commission President then? <laughs> and then the Liberals, they're a bit of a historical paradox. They still haven't realized that any liberal ideas they had have been completely perverted and swallowed by neoliberal ideology. They are stuck in the solutions and analysis of the 70s and 80s still believing that the market will solve everything. Get real, liberals. Your time is over. <laughs> and the left party is nice try, but you know, just being against everything doesn't change a thing yet. <laughs> and bashing austerity is good and very nice, but it's simply not enough. You also have to say where you want to go to. You also have to bring forward your solution. Complaining, sorry, is not enough. <laughs> and there's also others who are trying to threaten the European Union, who are trying to fish for voters by offering easy solutions and blaming everything on the EU. Let's be clear about this. Right-wing extremists and right-wing populists are not only attacking foreigners or minorities, they are attacking all of us. They are attacking freedom and democracy, but we shall not let them pass. There is no space for racism, there is no space for anti-Semitism, there is no space for homophobia, not in the member states and not in Europe. Our weapons against, against the right-wingers, our, our true belief in our values, our clear alternatives for a better Europe, our strong stance for human rights, those are our weapons and we're not afraid to use them. It will need us to stop them. It will need us, us Greens with our values based on solidarity, ecology and human rights. It will need us Greens to change Europe, to get Europe on the right track. This is an uphill battle, we all know it. But look, look what our Green Group has achieved over the past five years. We have managed to push through the Energy Efficiency Directive. We have put fishing quotas on a scientific basis for the first time, instead of basing them on how they've always been. With the massive mobilization of European civil society, we have managed to stop ACTA and SWIFT. We have put more human rights conditionality into Frontex. We pushed for the youth guarantee. We won on water privatization and on European banking supervision. We Greens, we make a difference. We have achieved all of this, even though we're only 7% of this parliament. 
every single Green Member of Parliament makes an amazing difference. So let's try to get lots of them into the European Parliament. Imagine what difference they will make. And it is possible, I believe. Look at Sweden, Bodil was saying, we will get more MEPs, not just two, which are already really cool. Look at the UK, where we might even double our MEPs. Look at the polls in Austria, which see us at an incredible 14%. And then some people say, okay, but what about France and Germany, you know, because if they're doing badly there, then, then the whole group will be much less. But look, in Germany, we're back at the level of the last elections. And in France, we're at 8%. But as José would remind you, if he wasn't out leading protests, five years ago, three months before the elections, the French Greens were at 8% as well. Et voilà, trois mois plus tard, at the elections, 16%. <laughs> so, dear José, Karima, Clarisse, Yannick, Pascal, Sandrine, and Michel, I just have one tiny little request for you. Do it one more time. <laughs> we are only at the beginning of the campaign now. Let's not confuse polls with election day. We Greens, we believe in our ideas. We're not just shouting empty slogans. We're here to change Europe. We're driven by an urge to tackle injustice. We're standing to change things for the better. And we already got started. We are ready for battle. We have mobilized already during the primary. And I want to thank every one of you for doing your part in this, especially my co-contenders. Monica, where is she? There. Who has been? <laughs> <laughs> Who is trying her best to get the green vote out in Italy? And Rebecca, who can't be here right now because she's standing with the people in Kiev on the Euromaidan, fighting for democracy and human rights. Thank you very much. Thank you all for doing this great campaign. But the primary was only the warm-up. Now we're ready for the marathon. And we know how to do it. Schulz, Juncker and Verhofstadt, they are yesterday's men. Today's Europe needs green ideas and green answers. We know it needs us, every single one of us. And yes, we're campaigning to get as many green MEPs as possible. But we're also campaigning because we believe in what we do. We campaign because we know that caring for Europe means changing it. We campaign because we know that together, as Green family in Europe, we are strong. We are a patchwork family with rebellious teenage kids, grandparents telling us about our founding days, an uncle overseas, and siblings all over the continent, and very exhausting family reunions. <laughs> and yes, at times, it's messy. And yes, we might differ occasionally. But in the end, we do stick together. We are family because we have the same urge to change, because we believe that together we can do things better. And when we're building Europe together, we are also building our family and growing, because we want a green Europe. Let's go out into the streets, to the marketplaces. Let's go out to where the people are. Let's carry our ideas and our hearts to our friends, to our neighbors, to passers-by, to citizens of Europe, and to those who would like to become citizens of Europe. Let's campaign for putting the green into the economy, for social justice, and for a better future, for climate targets that deserve their name. Let's say no to Fortress Europe, no to selling off our standards, we can do it, we have to do it, because we are Europe. Europe is what we make of it. If not us, then who? Dear friends, let's go out and fight. Let's change Europe. <laughs>